Okay, let's have a look at Ethernet now. So Ethernet is really is, is one of the most successful networking standards or technologies of all time. Uh, it is very dominant uh, in for cabled network connections. Uh, it started back in the 1970s uh, with relatively humble beginnings. Uh, one of the things that kind of set it apart at the time was the fact that it was uh, designed to solve this kind of uh, multiple access problem uh, on the shared bus. So early ethernet was a coaxial cable that joined all of the computers. So they all had um, a T-piece. So you'd have a length of cable, you put a T-piece in that would have a takeoff for the computer, plug onto the network card, and then the next length of cable would go to the next computer, so on and so on around a room. Uh, and then at the end, you had to put terminators on to make sure that uh, uh, it worked properly. And so this idea of having multiple devices transmitting at the same time was a very real problem because it actually was a shared media. Um, but the, uh, you know, the, the design of Ethernet made it quite simple and quite cheap. Uh, and the abstraction uh, of Ethernet frames uh, continues to today because it's just a, it's a really nice, uh, effective uh, abstraction that doesn't kind of get in the way and has enough flexibility. So returning to the, uh, the carrier sense multiple access, uh, so this is really meaning that the network cards on an ethernet network can sense if another node is transmitting um, and if it is they will wait patiently until that other node uh, finishes and then wait a short random period of time in case someone else jumps in first as well um, and then try and transmit uh, the collision detection part is actually uh, that uh, ethernet receivers are actually able to work out um, by listening as they transmit whether uh, someone else has started transmitting at the same time as well, uh, thus causing both frames to be lost. Uh, and so then they both know that they can wait a random amount of time and then uh, retransmit uh, solving that. So this helps you to get a much higher level of utilization uh, on the segment than if you didn't do that. If you don't do that, uh, you end up with what's kind of uh, called an Aloha style network uh, that has a maximum uh, utilization typically below 20 or 30 percent. Um, and indeed, Aloha, uh, which is set up on uh, Hawaii to link computers over separate islands, there was uh, kind of the early beginnings of Ethernet. And this is why they knew about this problem uh, of uh, uncoordinated transmission uh, getting in the way uh, by you know, calling multiple transmitters to, um, uh, to collide with their, uh, their transmissions. So by the late 1970s, the first 10 megabit Ethernet standard uh, was defined uh, and so what we now know today is the IEEE 802.3 standard um, is Ethernet um, and there's been multiple revisions to that so we now have the 100 megabit fast Ethernet we have gigabit Ethernet uh, 10 gigabit Ethernet uh, and you know it continues to be uh, developed because again the abstraction is one that works really nicely and effectively um, so the original Ethernet cable uh, was uh, coaxial and could be up to a few hundred meters long, um, kind of quite similar to cable TV cable, except that uh, you know the, the electrical properties of it are a little bit different. Uh, so primarily 50 ohm impedance rather than uh, 75 for TV, uh, so you couldn't mix and match the hardware even where it sometimes had the same connectors uh, without strange things happening, uh, where you get the analog effects. Uh, of the uh, the impedance mismatch causing reflections and partial reflections and interference and the like. So uh, I remember in the 90s having networks that had a combination of TV cable and Ethernet cable because I was a poor student at the time. Um, and we would have like half a dozen computers on a, um, uh, a single link, but having the mismatched cable would actually mean that some of the computers couldn't see some of the others. So we'd actually have to have a router, one of those machines on the, the the one continuous piece of cable actually having to repeat packets for ones that couldn't hear them directly from the others. Um, so yeah, impedance mismatch is uh, annoying. Um, a very different example of impedance mismatch is actually with um, uh, earthquake detection. That the um, uh, the impedance of, was it the refractive index of uh, the mantle and the core of the earth actually causes a, a black spot where you can't hear seismic waves from an area near the opposite side of the planet. You can hear them from everywhere else. Uh, you can hear them from further distances away even than the, the black spot, 
uh, but the uh, the black spot or a, a deaf spot or a blind spot, however you want to describe it, um, exists because of these kind of interesting analog uh, effects. And so this, yeah, uh, these things do cause real issues. Uh, so Ethernet, then we, said we had the cables, we had the T pieces and the, the devices connecting onto those that can receive and transmit. Um, and the uh, the network adapter implements the actual uh, the on wire protocol as we, we spoke about earlier in earlier video so we have the ethernet cable uh, we have the um, uh, the transceiver or the um, uh, the t piece that then connects to the adapter uh, and provides access and as we say that the ethernet cable is a shared medium uh, so everyone in theory can uh, transmit on it but you can also have uh, multiple Ethernet segments and multiple Ethernet cables joined together by repeaters that forward the signals. Um, there are limits on how many repeaters you could have, uh, which thus li then limited the total length of the uh, an Ethernet network. Um, and again, because every time you extend the length, you're increasing the round trip time. And then things like the carrier sense and collision detection mechanisms that rely on round trip time being low enough to reliably detect when these events uh, are occurring um, start to break down. Um, so uh, with Ethernet repeaters, um, you effectively can have um, one main trunk that then has these uh, uh, branches that come off it that are allowing lots more computers to be connected. Again, this is part of you know, the ability to have lots of computers on one cheap set of uh, network cable infrastructure uh, was highly attractive at the time. Okay, and we'll continue in the next video.